type something on uh, Google or even when you like open a browser and write www.google.com. So let me write www.google.com. Then what happens? So this particular thing is the website name, but this website name is not directly recognized by any of the host or any of the computer. So there are few terminologies that comes into play when we study computer networks. One is known as host. So host is nothing but in, in layman terms, you can call it as computer. OK, so in the layman term, you can call it as a computer. So it's nothing but a computer. So uh, I am running Microsoft Teams on my host. That is, this is the computer that I'm running into. So we will be using host everywhere uh, in computer networks. So host is nothing but a computer. And here what happens is your host can be in your network, can be in other network. So when you go to your labs, what happens is that all the computers which are there in your lab are connected to one network. So all those computer or all those hosts are lying in a single network. But if I talk about my computer and your computer, now we two are in two different networks. OK, so your host and my host are there in two different networks. Similarly, when we are trying to reach www.google.com means that we have a host. And this particular host is getting trying is trying to access another host which is present somewhere in the world. OK, now this is a host inside host. There will be a lot of processes. OK, so you know what is the process? So anything which you are doing on computer is a process. So this particular host in this particular host, there would be a particular process. Let's say it's P1, which is running on this particular host and this particular process want to access any website or any other host which is there in another network. So this is a network. And this is a host. And this particular process is there in host one. Similarly, let's say this is P2. This is host two and this host is also present in certain network. This is network two. This is network one. OK, so what happens is you want that one of your process needs to communicate to another process in P2. OK, so this request goes and it goes to P2. Now what is happening in this situation? The this site that is www.google.com is being running on a particular host in a particular network via a particular process. Anything which is running in a host is done through process. We have studied operating systems. So in operating systems, everything which is being done by the operating system is through process or then you can call threads and so other things. But yeah, we'll keep it easy and say process. So one process of one host in one network wants to access another process in another host in another network. So let's say Google is having its particular host like where Google is running is in California and you are here in India, let's say in Raudkela and you want to take the control over this like you want to get the data out of this process. So you write www.google.com. So what happens when you write this? So this gets converted into another form or which is known as number, which is called as IP address. OK, so this particular text that is www.google.com gets converted to IP address, which is a number. OK, and this via this number, this particular host inside network 2 having process P2 is being accessed. But <clears throat> along with IP address, there is one more thing which is required, which is known as port number. OK. So if you talk about IP address, so IP address helps you to recognize host plus the network in which the host is lying. So the 
work of IP address is to recognize this. And when you talk about a process, the process is being recognized by port number. OK. So we got two numbers. One is IP address and other is port number. And these two combinedly can identify a particular process running on Internet. So again, Internet is a group of hosts which are interconnected. OK, and now when you have to actually refer or actually get connected to certain process running on particular host in particular network, then you need IP address and the port number. OK, now if you know this uh, www.google.com, it is actually a HTTP request and HTTP request has a fixed port number and that port number is 80. OK, there are other services which have fixed port numbers. Let's say SMTP it has 25, then post office protocol, then we have uh, FTP. So these are few recognized type of protocols or these are recognized type of request which happens and the port number for them are fixed. Now let's suppose you are running any particular process XYZ and that process is running with some memory in your computer. OK, this is the process. This is your memory in the computer and you're running this process. So what will happen is there would be a port number which will be assigned to you to this process by the operating system. So operating system will assign a port number to this particular process and then via the communication what happens is you establish a uh, what do you say a network with another host specifying that OK, I'm using this port number. So next time when you want to connect to me, you should make sure that you're using this port number to connect to me. OK, so you see there is a host host can be reached by using IP address, but inside a host there will be a lot of processes happening. So when you have a host, when you have a computer, there will be a lot of processes happening. So which process you want to actually talk to, which process you want to communicate that is defined. That is actually done by using port numbers. OK, I hope this is clear. What is IP address? Why it is required? What is port number? Why it is required? Each process are having port number, one port number associated with it. Uh, and that process having the port number can be ref like accessed by another process which is having a port number by using IP plus port number. So this is how the things goes. OK, so therefore if we are only going to type www.google.com, so we'll be using an IP address of this particular host along with we will be adding 80 to it, which is acting as a port as a port number to the same. Uh, any doubts in this particular discussion? Let's move ahead. So we got the hang of port number. We got the hang of IP address. Now, why we again let, let's go very practically. So what you do, you actually go and recharge your cell phones, okay, to a particular network. So let's say I have a, a, a like any Airtel package or Vodafone. Or let's say when you have, have a laptop, you have something LAN or you have any Wi-Fi access which is given by Fibernet, Airtel, Geo, so on and so forth. Now, why, how they come into picture? Like it is very easy, right? You can connect to them. So how they come into picture? So the first thing they do is actually they convert this particular text to this particular number. Now the question arises, can we reach Google via the IP address directly. Can we reach any website via IP number, via, via IP address? So the answer is yes, you can directly reach. If you try the IP address, you will be able to directly reach to that particular website. But the problem why we use text is because human brain is trained in a way that it can remember text rather than remembering numbers. If you I give you a cell phone number of someone and his name, you will be able to re remember his name, but not his cell phone number. So it's like how human brain has actually evolved and developed. We are able to remember names rather than remembering digits. OK, so this is what th this is the reason that we use text. But this text needs to be converted to IP address and here the role of Internet service provider comes. So Airtel, Geo, Vodafone, ACT Fibernet and everything. These are known as ISP. The full form is 
इंटरनेट सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स ओके सो दे यूज like we use isp service that is internet provider service to resolve this particular name into ip address there are all, all there are different different way like functions other functions as well but since as we'll move ahead we'll be able to understand how why why jio is coming into picture or why vodafone is coming into picture and so on but this is a first requirement that we have come across so this needs to be resolved to id address that is done by isp and the resolution is known as dns which is known as domain name servers so converting this particular text into an ip address is known as domain name there is a domain name server and this is domain name service which is provided by isp which converts this particular text into ip address okay so this is how the things go so when you write this particular website name there is a request which has been made to domain name server the domain name server gives you an ip address and then from the ip address you reach the host and from the port number you reach the particular process and there where google is lying and then what happens is again there is a backward request which happens from process p2 to process p1 which loads your web page that is google page google search engine so this is how the thing goes in real world and therefore this is which is the base of computer networks so we have to study what is port number what is ip address how ip addresses are what are different protocols then we'll be able to we have to study about how two processes communicate how this particular this this uh, way of connecting between process p1 and p2 is done how the packets from our end go to other end so all this combinedly we study in computer networks so this was the overview how we communicate but when we communicate we require lot of things one is how the packets are getting transferred how it is getting routed how one router is receiving the packet from the other router okay how the process is re receiving those packets then how we have the lan right how lan cables are getting connected how we are able to access net over there what is the requirement of internet service providers then what is ip address why we use port number so all these questions can be summed up and answered in computer networks course so this is how uh, we'll go ahead in this particular uh, like series next uh, there has also been like uh, something which you can call as that uh, this uh, inside your network only so this is the network which has all the users of let's say jio okay network let's say network 1 is of jio so it has all the users of jio so what they do is they have a dns which is the domain name server which is also present inside the network and when the dns is present inside the network that is domain name server so your process go and actually they ask for okay what is the ip address of the particular thing that i have noted down it responds back you with the ip address and this process goes ahead so here in dns there is sometimes caching also done so caching is that uh, it stores the website with the ip address so it is like a map so you have name and that name is getting mapped to an ip address so this is how uh, like overview about how a dns looks like so it is a mapping it takes the like the name and it gives you the ip address and therefore this process is able to connect with the communicate with the other process 